All right, we're live on. Uh, I think we're just waiting for YouTube to catch us up here. YouTube's always lags behind. Come on. There she goes. All right, let me do my starting here. Welcome from behind enemy lines to Rick Slifer, as I see it. A one hour talk show about guns, politics, or anything else that crosses my mind. Also, answer questions from the uh, audience. You know, just put them in the chat or send me an email at rickslife, as I see it, at gmail.com or uh, spottedrick at gmail.com. Also, within 24 hours of this show ending, the audio file is on Podbean, Stitcher, and iTunes for your listening pleasure. Also, I have a Patreon page. And then right now, I'm running a Indiegogo um, campaign trying to raise money go towards um, stickers and patches that I can give away as prizes on the show here. You know, any help anybody can give me, I appreciate it. What else? Oh, yeah, go to Spreadshirt.com. Uh, I, on there, they're at, they got t-shirts and uh, coffee mugs and stuff like that. Um, either type in Rick's Life or Spotted Rick and my stuff should come up on there. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, that's it for now, I think. Uh, if I got anything else, I'll mention it. Uh, well, I see Roosted Films is in the uh, in the chat. Oh, and he got both packages I sent. Great. Glad to hear it. Uh, we got, uh, looks like we got Mr. White over in uh, Gun Channels, but I'm not sure there. Gun Channels seems to, you never know who's there. You, you got to keep hitting reload for it to, uh, you know, refresh itself, but that's okay. We're here at, in the panel right now. We have Patriot in the dark, and uh, I did I'm, no. I'm waiting for other people to show up. I've had a couple of uh, declines. Uh, Night Strike decided he was going to hang out with somebody else today. You know, that's okay. I don't mind. I just keep doing my thing. So anyway. Okay, a Roosted Films been having trouble with my mail. Clover Tack actually had a package sent back to him. Huh. Hell, I just stuck them in an envelope and sent them to you. <laughs> and hope for the best. Uh, I know, it's getting, uh, I gotta, actually, I gotta run out and buy some um, more mail-in. We were talking about this last night, or was it Thursday night on uh, Clover's Tech Show. You know, when you're doing this stuff, you gotta buy the. You gotta buy the. You, when you, when you start uh, sending out stuff like knives or hats or anything that's bulky, you gotta put it in a bigger sort of padded envelope. Otherwise, it gets ripped to shreds normally. So, um, but then, anyway, I'm glad you got it. All the stuff I sent you. And did you, hey, Patriot, did you get the uh, sticker I sent back to you with the signature on it? Yes, I did. Actually, I got that and the Clover Tech patch. Okay. I just, I haven't had a chance to uh, take a picture and thank you and, and stuff. So thank you. And, no problem. I'll make sure you got it. And thanks for the invite. That's okay. So anyway, I got a couple of things. I'm going to talk about some stuff we talked about on Wednesday, plus a couple of new items. What I forgot to talk about on Wednesday was that uh, that silly law that uh, Washington State's come up with now that uh, your guns must be locked and unloaded in the home. Otherwise, you're going to get fined. Now, who are they hiring and paying to come and check to make sure you're doing that? Or are they waiting for you for something to happen then <laughs> fine you after the fact? You know what I'm saying? I mean, the reason they're doing it, from what I can understand, is that they feel if they can, you know, if they can stop somebody because they feel guns are used in more suicides than anything else. And suicide is an impulse action, according to their claim. And so if a gun is locked up, the, the feeling to want to commit suicide might pass if the gun is locked up. So, 
My question mm-hmm. is, so the gun agent isn't locked up. Somebody takes it and commits suicide. So you're grieving because you one of your loved ones has committed suicide. Then they want to come and slap a $10,000 fine on you on top of that. <laughs> oh, man, you got to love a amateur. You really have. But uh, I think it's a, I mean, also, okay, so, and also if somebody steals the gun and uses it in a crime, you can get fined for that too. So what happens if somebody comes in, steals my gun, and shoots me? Who are they going to find if I'm dead? <laughs> but, you know, I think these things are uh, unbelievable. Yeah, it definitely seems like it's an after fact, you know, that they'll get you after you do something else, for sure. Oh, yeah, I think that's what it is. It's not that they're not going to go around and check all the gun owners and see the lockdown. They're waiting to after fact. To hit you, yeah. And so, if somebody steals it and uses it in a crime or whatever, I guess you got to pr- show that your safe got busted open or however you keep it locked up. You know, the, so yeah, as Ruth hmm. said, it plays into the red flag laws that they're, they're coming up with. Yeah, we have that here too. That's the one thing I was worried about last week. As we know, you know, came out of hospital with my hip, and I had in-house physical therapy. And one of the uh, physical therapists, she was very uncomfortable coming in here. <laughs> As she saw my my gun cabinet here behind me with all the stickers on it, and you know, I got my thing. That thing I read out at the beginning of the show. You know, we talk about guns and politics and all this, and. She said, are your guns locked up? I said, yeah. I said, you're sitting right in front of them. You sat in this, she sat in this chair. So, uh, you know, she was freaking out. What I was worried about, under that red flag law here in Rhode Island, if she went to the police and said, I'm uncomfortable, I'm not sure if he's safe, you know what I'm saying? They could have come and taken my guns from me. That's, I, mean, th- I mean, that really went through my head. If she said, well, he can't really take care of himself because he can't walk around or whatever. He shouldn't have, you know, he shouldn't have guns. I mean, they don't need much for him to get that uh, that warrant to come in to, uh, to seize your guns. So, but, and I said this before, under that, especially here in Rhode Island, I don't know about the other states, but they have that law here, and I mentioned it before. So, say for argument, say I was depressed, and I was feeling that way. So, somebody says something to somebody. Next thing you know, the police come and knock on my door. They say, we come and take all your guns. So, they take all my guns away. There's nothing in that law that they passed to help me. So, they left with all my guns, and I'm still feeling depressed and want to kill myself. But I, So, I hang myself and said, that's okay. You know? Mm-hmm. There's, no, there's nothing in the law saying, well, we're taking your guns, now we're going to send you the, the mental, I know it's a bad word, but the mental hospital here in, in Rhode Island is called Butler. I mean, they take your guns, they can at least refer you to go to Butler to see if you're okay. No, they just leave you here hanging, basically. <laughs> Sorry for the pun there, but you, you know what I mean. I think it's, uh... oh, what about due process? Hey, Patrick, good to see you. Well, under the red law here in Rhode Island is they have to give you a court date. Well, what it says is you're entitled to a court date within 14 days of them seizing your weapons for you to go to court to prove that you're not a danger to others or yourself to get them back. But it could be longer than 14 days, but that's what they're striving for. It's 14 days, and if you can't prove that you're, uh, you know, a danger to you or others, the judge can order them to keep them up to a year or longer. So, My question is, how, how do you prove that you're not a danger to yourself? I mean, I guess you're still it's... right when you show up in 14 days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's nothing in the law that specifies any of this. You know what I'm saying? They just—they yeah. put it under mental health to get it through. 
mean, it's basically gun confiscation is what it is. Disguised. <clears throat> as a mental health thing. In other words, I'm guilty to I prove myself innocent. You know? Yeah. A bunch of BS, in my opinion. But there we go. Huh. Anyway, that's sort of like basically what that law is in Washington, too. You know, with the gun safes and everything else. You know? But there's very vague law here in Rhode Island. Like, I live on my own. So if I actually walk out, say, like right now I got my little, uh, my little, what you call it, North American arms. Yeah, it's loaded too, my 22 Magnum. I have it sitting here on the table. If I, if I say I have to go out and leave my front door, you know, lock my front door, that's considered being secured because my front door is locked. You know? Hmm. That's what the law states. Now, whether it would hold up in court is another question. You know? <laughs> but that's what it states. As long as it, it, your front door is locked, you know, it's secure. So, but we'll see. I don't plan on testing it. I do. <laughs> I, agree, I mean, I'm not going to lie. There has been times this little gun is that I have it sitting here over in the corner. Sometimes when I'm reading my mail, I throw it over there. And sometimes it gets covered up, and I've gone out, left it, put the bell on off of it, and I go, oh, shit, I get back. You know, these things happen. Actually, I've been carrying that lately. I mean, I carried that when I went to physical therapy in my pocket. I had to go to the doctors. I kept it in my pocket. You know, I didn't want to, because I didn't, basically, I carried that one because, you know, when I'm Hey Rick. Yeah, is your is your volume up? You're really hard for me to hear, but it just might be me. You might want to check the chat, see if they can hear you. Oh, okay. I can't hear you at all. I'm going to have to jump back in, I think. Can you? Oh, there you are. You got me now? Yeah. What'd you, what'd you do? It just faded way out, and it was, I I couldn't hear you at all. I was done. Sorry. <laughs> I 
you having trouble hearing it, Casino Boss? Not, not anymore. You're, you're loud and clear. So, how about, how about the people in the chat? I was what I'm asking them out there. Okay. <laughs> so, Mr. Audio is back, and I wonder what happened. Why did I lose audio? I don't know. Well, uh, just blame it on the blind guy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Skynet checking up on me, or is he? Or is he? People here in Rhode Island know I'm a gun guy, and they're keeping an eye tabs on me. That was them, you know, <laughs> connecting to my internet where they can listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> well, whatever we done, and we got it fixed now. Everybody's saying so that's good. All right. All right. So what's happening with you, Patriot? Anything good? I, I did some shooting at the beginning of the week. I spent some time at a, the family farm, and I actually got one video that's kind of in the mix, I guess. But it, obviously, I haven't posted it yet. But um, my daughter comes back today, so I'm trying to live it up before she gets back. <laughs> no <bite. laughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, David... David was going to join us, but he sent me just sent me an email that his AC crashed and it's about 97 degrees down in Florida and the humidity is killing him and his wife's yelling at him. So he said he, uh, he has to fix that before he can jump in on the chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep the wife happy and, the, and your world's happy. Mm. You know, that's why I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying a word. No, I'm not either. I tell you, I mean, I'm not saying uh, right now I'm loving it because here, in, uh, as everybody knows, I'm just rambling today is I have my, you know, I have my uh, press here for reloading all here in the front room on right next to this table. I mean, you see my hand going out and sitting right here so I can reload. I got my television right in front of me here. The AC's over there. I mean, what more does a man need? This is my little man cave in my living room. Now, if I ever get a girlfriend, I mean, I mean, if I get if a girlfriend ever moves in, let's put it that way, <laughs> this will come to an end. I would imagine. <laughs> you need a mini fridge. Don't forget yeah. that. Yes, I do. I don't have one back here, but I need to get one. You're right. That's not bad. That could be my next purchase. Yeah. Before I got, I mean, as I said, everybody knows I lost one of my cats. He ran away. He hasn't come back yet. I got a, I got a feeling either some crazy cat lady's got him, because if you, I mean he was timid and stuff, but he was big and cuddly and fat and lady like his owner. If you fed him, I think he would stay with you. So either some crazy cat lady's got him, or <laughs> some some predator got him. Because we even it's a small town, we there is coyotes here in town. Who live in the, who live in the, the dumpsters and stuff like that? So he, he even though he's big, he ain't no match for one of those. So, but anyway, where I was going with this is on the man cave thing. I I still got it. I've carried it with me for the last. How old am I now? Sixty one. I'm getting old. Damn, I'm getting old. Um, I've carried it with me since I was. For the last 40 years, I have a I have a model railroad, a railway, because most of it's British, so it's, a, you know, but I do have American trains too, and I've got a, oh, I don't know what you would call it, all, I got an, around, on three walls, I've got a shelf that's about, two foot off the ground and it goes around three walls and I used to have the trains going around there they go they go down one wall across the other back up then I reverse them come back the other way but once I got the cats I had to take it down because the cats kept attacking it <laughs> so I got into guns so there we go Ohio you sound much quieter than Patriot. Hard to hear you. Oh man. Let me let me check here. My, my, everything 
That's good. Let me check my stuff down here. Hang on. Yeah, I mean, I, everything looks fine, my end. Okay, let me see. Uh, I turned the volume up a little there. I don't know if that's going to make a difference. I don't know. So we're... Uh, can you still hear me? Say, now, Ruth, yeah. that audio is good. Yep. Sounds good to me. Okay. All right. I mean, sometimes what will happen, it will... I don't know. A lot of times, if I keep... I mean, because I, I rarely ever switch off this laptop. It runs 24-7. And everything I got hooked up to, occasionally I'll have to shut it down and reboot it. Because I don't know why. Maybe the uh, RAM gets so full or whatever, it just can't handle all the shit I'm running through it. I don't know. But well, Russ said that was better. So, uh, okay, that's good. Um, oh, got the gun to keep the cats away from the trains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Might have to move that shelf up higher. Well, yeah, but it... it it came, it came that way when I rented the apartment, so I just left it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Before, but anyway, there we go. So I'm, uh, Anyway, let me go to my next item here on my list. What's my next item? Um, oh, I mean, this is just, I'm just talking politics here. The governor of Florida, what's his name? Rick Scott. Now he's running for senator. Uh, he... There's, there's, I don't know if people read it. There's a little, uh, I don't know, little controversy going on that the state says they he lied to them about his financial situation because you have to uh, divulge how much how much money you got to be in the Senate. Well, that governor is worth two hundred and fifty five million dollars. I mean, what they're saying is he 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 since the time he's been governor, I don't know how long down there in Florida, but he's he's never taken a salary. He you know he uses his own money to live on. He used to be um he used to be a big shareholder in some hospital or some shit or a bunch of hospitals, and uh, that's where the majority of his money came from. So they're claiming. But it seems, you know, and but what they're saying is that he didn't divulge that when he was the governor of, of Florida. You know, to me, what difference does it make if you have money or if you don't have money? I, I don't understand why we, uh, you have to do this. Like in the Senate to di divulge how much money you got. Say, well, say I ran for Senate and I put down all I got is my disability check. Am I going to be disqualified? You know what? I mean, what business is it of the voter to know how rich the person you're voting for is? Does it really matter? I mean, I could see it if, if they were taking a salary or something, but if they're not taking a salary, then that shouldn't be. You know, I mean, like they. I guess they, if there's a concern of where he's getting his money, if, if people are just giving it to him for, you know, favors or something, then obviously that's an issue. But if it's something because he earned it or he created something, I don't see an issue. Yeah. Hey, unknown user, good to see you. Yeah. So, uh, Oh, I know what else I wanted to talk about. Did you see that? Um, I think Budget and Guns brought it up the other night with the, um, the head of the Virginia uh, gun rights group, Philip Van Cleve, and Larry Pratt of Guns of America being duped by that, what's his name on his show? Where, uh, yeah. Now, I've seen the video. Yes, it's goddamn stupid. You know, and I think it was a stupid thing to do. But we're seeing it now. 
Now, I don't, I'm not sticking up for him or anything. I don't think it was right. I mean, is their credibility gone as a gun rights activist? Because when this happened, that Van Cleef actually told the uh, members of the Virginia Coalition or whatever the name of their thing is, that it happened back in April. So, and all of a sudden, just because it's been shown on air now in July, or was it beginning in of June or whenever it was showing, that uh, it's it's a big problem now. I mean, what do you think? Do you think they they should resign from their positions? I didn't see it at first. You know, I I watched it later, but I don't know. Yeah, it's a it, it's a bad situation all around. I think. Yeah I, mean, yeah, I mean, it uh, made us look, uh, made gun owners look kind of stupid, really, especially with the position they're in. But, you know, I don't know. That's a hard call to me. Should they resign? I mean, put it this way. Do you think if they're fighting something, their credibility is going to be in question? That is, I guess that's what it comes down to. You know, I mean, you know, there, it's going to be brought up for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't understand how they could actually have, you know, not necessarily fell for it. You know, even if it was, you know, some, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> there's no excuse for it. Yeah. You're I mean, right. so, I'm sure there's some of the editing and, and such that makes them look worse than what it and might what have it really been. Was. But there is. There are some sections of that that are were insane. I couldn't hardly watch it, so I actually I didn't watch the whole thing. And once it, once it started getting into it, it was just yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did too. I just thought you know, you're right. Now unknown user says I think these people should know better. Yes, they should. You know. Yeah. Even though he said it happened back in April, and they're making a big fuss of it now, he should have he should have he should have known better. He shouldn't have done it in the first place. And when I first started watching it, it kind of came. You know, I was trying to look at it. You know, any way that it possibly could have been messed around or whatever. You know, and if it would have been with the the idea of teaching safety. Versus you know, actual shooting and, and such crazy, like they said, you know, I mean, just trying to find some way that it could have been twisted around it. Yeah, my my gymnastics isn't that good, so yeah, yeah, you know, and I, of course, I had I didn't see the video, so I, I just listened to it, so I didn't see any puppets and any of the dancing or any of that kind of craziness, so which I'm, I'm sure that that. <laughs> that kind of sealed the deal for them. So, yeah, I put links in the chats if anybody wants to join the join the panel here. So, uh, there we go. Oh, now I'm there. We go. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. Who won the prize from last week? Man, because it's halfway for the new prize. Hang on, where's <laughs> last week's? Oh, here it is. Last week's mail-in prize was for a bunch of, you know, stickers, a bunch of stickers, and the big van, G Webb's van sticker, the big one, not the little one. This is the big one. That was the prize. So I got all the names in my random picker. And what was the question? Oh, oh. Okay, let me repeat the question. The question for last week was, in the 1996 film, The Quick and the Dead, what caliber does Court, played by Russell Crowe, shout out for when he needs a second bullet to kill Spotted Horse? And the answer was a 38 long call. Cool. And uh, I got my, hang on, where's, where's, where's my thing here? I got all my names in. Now, we only had five people write in, so it's a shame that, that it's that few, but 
those five people get a better chance of winning. And it's normally the same three to five people that ride in every week. <laughs> so let's see who wins this week. You're even on here, Patriot. So, All right, let's have a look. No pressure. I hit the button. Come on. My internet is working slow today. I don't know why. Richard White is the winner. There you go. The random Good job. Mind you, I mean, normally it picks it faster than that. It was, you know, the old thing was going around and around and around. But it finally uh, picked one. So there we go. So, Richard, you're the winner of your in here today. So there you go. I will Congratulations. Go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let, just let me write his name on here. I remember who to send it to. The, yeah, because sometimes I'll forget to do that, and uh, then I'll have to skip through the sh recording of the show to find out who won. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we got – this is the instant quiz I'm doing here. And uh, let me get the – All right. Uh Right, where is it? I'm just getting the answer here, and I'm going to put it in the side chat there for, uh, <laughs> yeah. for, you, to, for you to see, because I need your help. If you can't, you know. uh, yeah, I can't yeah, see I the can't. chats, though. Yeah. All right, no problem. <laughs> but I'll put the answer in there for you anyway. All right. Okay, you know. Okay, but I, I, can, I can do it. I can keep an eye on both of them. So, all right, the question is, it's real easy, this one. I don't need a first name. I just want to, uh, the last name will work. Who created front sight training facility or program? Who created the front sight training program facility? I believe it's down, isn't it down in Arizona or Texas somewhere. Front, front sight. I think, I think it's, it's a big, it's a big organization. I know that much. So, Anybody? Any? What well, few people I got in the chat today? Slow day today. Come on, people. It ain't that hard. Want me, guys? You you want me to give you a clue? You can look it up on you. You know, use Google. There we go. Ro Roosted Films got it. There you go. I didn't show you what the prize was. It's a bunch of stickers. You got the old Clover Tech sticker. Got another one of his decals here. Got a Glock, big, big giant Glock sticker. So that's the prize for the instant thing. So that's, so that's yours, Roosted. It'll be in the mail to you. Let me write your name on there for I can remember. Okay. Good job. The good job. Is it in right. Nevada or Arizona? I can't remember. I think it's. I have to look it up myself. I can't remember to be honest with you. Uh. Okay, now we got a quiz at the end of the show, and th the writing quiz. This one's really good, worth a million dollars. I got a Clover Tech um, dog tag, with chain and all, and and a bunch of and a bunch of and a bunch of stickers here in the envelope. But that's the main prize. So there we go. That's for the end of the show. Okay, it's in Nevada, unknown user says. So, okay. All right. I mean, we're, we're, we're moving along. Oh, also, did you read that? Um, I mentioned this the other day, too. That, um, oh, a student um, got a settlement. I'm trying to think where it was. I forgot the right, what state it was in, but where he got suspended or wearing a build the wall t-shirt um, in a political class in his high school. Yeah. They asked him to cover it up and he said no. So they suspended him and the settlement, he got $25,000. He said, that's going to cover his legal fees. Plus he had to get, plus the, 
the the, the, super, the superintendent of the school districts had to write him a uh, written apology. And he gets to wear the shirt. Yeah, yeah, which I think is pretty. Uh, <laughs> which I think is pretty good. You know, I mean, because mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of schools and colleges have been doing that. You know, anybody wearing a sort of like Trump thing, you know, they are the they're the bad guys. Yeah. Which I think is uh it's a pretty sad state of affairs. Hey Zippy, good to see you. Yeah, my daughter's school does the thing with firearms, of course. No, you know, no pictures or anything, but they didn't even want Star Wars t shirts because you know some of the stormtroopers and their little blasters or whatever. They're it's ridiculous. That is ridiculous, isn't it? I mean that is I mean really for better word for his asinine, really. <laughs> I mean, long as, uh, to me, long as, uh, what difference does it make? Long To me, long as it's not, um, what I'm, what Vulgar. I'm, vulgar, yeah, that's where, yeah. like, like, like it, you got a t-shirt that says F-U on it in big giant letters, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that, maybe, you know, thing, but uh, anything, anything else, I think it's good to go, personally. So, uh. That's yeah, it. there's a lot worse things than that. I mean, oh, some yeah. of the the writing that's off the back of uh, girls' pants and stuff. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I mentioned this earlier too. Was um, down there in good old California, where they want to uh, allow illegal. What do they call them? What's the correct term? Undocumented immigrants. Mm-hmm. Uh, be able to vote in school uh, districts, you know, for, for school, the school board and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, I can, un- I, you look at it, well, these undocumented adults, their kids are going to school, so they should have some say of what their kids are being educated. You, I mean, if you looked at it like that, I mean, I'm a firm believer getting to the country the correct way. You know, yep. to me, I don't think their kids should even be in school, but honestly, See, if, I if mean, you rob a taxpayer's money paying for that. Yeah, if you rob a bank and you're in prison, I don't think you can vote in your school board. Yeah. So but it's the same I, thing. You break the law, you break the law. That's right. That's right. Oh. And not only that, is it, but I can see the Democrats. So what they're doing is they're trying to get votes. The Democrats want to basically rule the country for the rest of time, you know. But what what will happen is if they let them vote in school things, then the next thing you know, there's going to be a court case saying, "Well, you let you allow them to vote in school things, but you don't allow them to vote in state and federal." That's unconstitutional. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, and that's what, that's what they're trying to do. Or, mm. or, or am I being too conspiracy theory here? No, no, it's wrong either way. They shouldn't be, you know, they're not covered by the Constitution anyways, being illegal. That's the way I look at it. But uh, in California, you, you can never tell. You know, they're, uh, there are a lot. The, the, California has its own constitution, I think. <laughs> Every state does, but what I mean is that uh, their federal constitution is not like the one that uh, the rest of us know. <laughs> mm. They read it totally different than we do. So uh, there you go. What can yeah, you I, say? I lived there in the 90s, but yeah. Oh, what, I, California? Yes, yeah. The only thing I remember are jalapeno carrots, but <laughs> <laughs> I own, I've only ever—I mean, I've only been to California, and it was just a stopover, changing airplanes. Mm. You know, I remember it, I was a kid too. I think I was what fourteen or fifteen years old. We're flying in mm. from Japan, stopped in San Francisco there, changed yeah. airplanes. That's the only time I've ever been in Ca- That's the only time I ever stepped in California. You know? Yeah, I was on Pendleton, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> it right. was a little different. Not like- yeah. yeah. Now, 
weird thing is, I don't know if they still do it, but back in the day when I was a kid, now we're going back, you know, 50, 50 odd years ago, 50, 60 years ago, when my father applied for my social security card, all security cards for military overseas back then came out of California. I got a California, um, from what I've been told, the number, the starting numbers or whatever. Oh, okay. Come out of California. So there we go. I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah. Why, I don't know, but that's it. Yeah, Rooster said what well, I was saying about the illegals voting area. I mean, it's it's voter fraud, no matter how you look at it. If an illegal can vote, it's voter fraud. Mm, definitely. I, I mean, there's a lot of arguments about, you know, illegals and stuff, but... It, yeah. Well, what you know, I see is, you know, they, because uh, I believe they allow them uh, driver license in California too, don't they? thought it was New York, but I'm, but anyway, I'm sure well, somewhere well, it does. Me is, so they get their driving license. They're illegal. They're illegal, un- undocumented immigrant. They get their driving license, which is basically, in today's society, is your ID. When somebody says you got an ID, normally nine times out of ten, people pull out their driving license. Here you go. Right, so they're illegal. I bet you it doesn't say that on their license that they're an undocumented immigrant. So, say for argument, say yeah, they get it in the state they're in. What's stopping them, like me, when I moved from just one state over from Connecticut to Rhode Island? I have to get a new Rhode Island license. So, yeah. they say they move out of that state to another state. Just go into the local DMV. Hey, I need. I'm. I'm here. I just moved here. I need a new license. Next thing you know, they're 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 voting, and nobody knows the difference. Yeah, I know that they. A while back, they were somebody was trying to put that there was a a hard date for people with like visas, you know, for, so that they could get licenses, but it, to actually have the date printed, you know, like the an exit date, and I knew they threw up a a big stink about that because, you know that that calls them out or puts more focus on them or something. But I, I don't know. I don't know. I know if, if you try to get a, a license, like in Michigan, um, you have to have, I mean, it's, it's a long process. I think yeah. you, know, you have to have bills in your name. Plus they have to, I don't know if they have a contact cause I knew somebody for, that, that moved here from another state and they, there was, there was a process. It wasn't like just show them and you know, they just mail you one and, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Rich, how you doing? Good, glad you showed up. You won the you won the uh, prize for last week, by the way. So uh, there you go. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, maybe I'm making too much out of it, but it. Uh... But that that also calls into effect this new enhanced ID that they're calling for for 2020. Some places already you know, require you to have that enhanced thing. It's got like a star or something on it that it takes a little bit more, I don't know, paperwork to get, you know, but it's, it's kind of takes the place of a passport. I know if you just fly in the continental U S between States, um, a lot of them require it now where you actually have to have that enhanced ID. And I'm, well, I don't know. Some of the States that are given IDs to, People that aren't citizens, you know, they probably get around it somehow. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. It's a, uh, it's strange. I remember when I moved to the United States. When I finally moved back, it, it was in 1995 when I came back to the states. My, my wife back then, before we got divorced, was was English, so I had to go to the embassy. And do all the paperwork and pay money, <laughs> you know, for her to get a green card. Yeah. You know, now she got the green card and 
because she was married to me an American, it it was sort of like there was no sort of end date on it because she was married to me. Now, when we got divorced because of my sons were underage, that she was allowed to keep it, and nothing changed because she became even though it was joint custody, they were living with her, so she needed to be here because my 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 children were underage back then, you know. Yeah. So, but I remember I was so mad at her. I mean, we talk now, and you know we can talk and then be civil. I mean, no matter what you say, after all, you still got to talk to them because you still got your kids. You know what I'm saying? But we're civil now. But I remember when I first when I was getting when I first got divorced. You know, it was one of these. I used to say, "All I want is one clear shot." You know, <laughs> and also, and and even one time, I don't know why this what this has got to do with guns and politics, but hey, I'm I'm on a I'm on a ramble now. But uh, at one time, I even called up immigration when I was in the middle of my divorce to try to get her deported. <laughs> oh man, I tell you the things we do. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, okay, that's uh, that's enough of my life story. Or some of it. Yeah. What about that? Uh, what I loved reading was, oh, what's his name? Um, Zuckerberg or whoever own whatever his name is that owns Facebook. <laughs> he personally lost sixteen billion dollars in one day. Made my <laughs> that made my day when I read that. You know. I think the company as a whole lost more, but he personally lost sixteen billion dollars, just like yeah. that overnight. Yeah, it was like the the one of the biggest losses, you know, single day losses. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, Ben started that bullshit again. Uh, it's right. It's in the chat. We got. I got a troll, but but my guys are taking care of it. Thank you guys. <laughs> no. I don't support free speech. Oh, he's at it again. I'm gonna have to, can we go in there and ban him completely? I just I think you just click on his name and there's like dots or something. I don't know. I've never seen it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh I'll look into that because we I mean I don't want him in there anymore ever. You know? So, uh, son of a bitch. But, I, <laughs> but, but my uh, my moderators out there in the chat are taking care of it. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. What else is uh, what else? Oh yeah. What else I liked was the not so much. I doubt if I can ever afford one. But the law where um, 3D printing of guns. Is allowed now, you know. Yes. Yeah. Which, uh, which is a pr which in itself, I think, is pretty good. If somebody wants to make a AR fifteen lower or whatever, but the part I like about this whole thing was they got the just. I think it wasn't it. The, isn't that the one where they got the Justice Department to actually specify an AR fifteen is not a military weapon? They actually put it in writing. You know? Yes. So that I mean that blows a lot of these uh anti gunners like calling it an assault weapon. It ain't. Because the Justice Department claims it's not. Yeah, that that it's not a military or military yeah. weapon or weapon of war. Yeah. I have I have something about that, but I'm supposed to have that on midnight's uh closer chat Sunday. Okay. I, I, there's some things I looked into and um, so I, I, I suggest just tune in and check it out. I will try to remember to do that. So that's good. Um, what else have I got written down here? Sometimes I got to learn to read my own writing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I need to write better. Oh yeah. Talking about that, um, 3D printer that uh, <laughs> uh, was it that Facebook originally banned him. I don't know if he's still banned. That that, that Missouri uh, candidate who was uh, giving away 
a ghost gun, a, a printer, a ghost gunner two machine that does uh, that you can print 3D stuff out on. Oh, seventeen hundred dollars, and he was giving it away in a raffle, and Facebook um, banned it. I don't know if they are allowing it anymore, but uh, was that a printer or was it like a a, a mill, like a CNC? Uh, I think it must have been like a mill because it's actually called a Ghost Gunner Two machine. Okay, and it's worth seventeen hundred dollars, and they're made to order. If you want one, all you got to do is put down a two hundred and fifty dollar deposit. They'll make you one to order. So there you go. But anyway, he was giving one away in a raffle, which I thought was pretty neat. But I said, and he originally done it on Facebook, on his Facebook page, and they uh, banned it. I don't know if they put it back up or not. I think FPC was giving away one too. Yeah. Hey, gun. Hey, G Webs. There's a. Uh, He's in the chat there thanking for me hosting the show. No problem, G. I quite enjoy doing it. Yeah. So there we go. Um, I'm about oh man, well, that that's good because I'm almost at the end of my list here. So we can go over what I'm giving away as a prize for this coming. I mean, I think I've already done it once, but we'll do it again. I'm giving away a Clover Tech Dog Tag, which I think is pretty neat. You know, it's, it's different, and, and I think I got a uh, got some stickers in here and some business cards and all that kind of good stuff. So that's the pro that this is the main email in prize, and you email it to Rick's Life as I see it at gmail.com or spottedrick at gmail.com use either one now I've made the decision that if you email it to both it's still only one vote you don't get two votes in the uh, in the raffle <laughs> so but anyway you can either either mail it to either one of those and the quick it's a it's a long question this week you're gonna have to do some research on this one, I think. Unless you unless you know your movies. And everybody should know this movie. All right? Here's the question. In the film, Unforgiven, little Bill Daggett is is called to demand English Bob hand over his pistols. What gun and what caliber? was English Bob's backup revolver that he tried to hide from Little Bill, but had taken it away from him prior to being beaten in front of the townspeople. So, in the film Unforgiven, Little Bill Daggett is called to demand English Bob to hand over his pistols. What gun and what caliber was English Bob's backup revolver that he tried to hide from Little Bill? But he had taken it away from him before he beat him up in front of the town. There you go. That question That's was supplied one. by Sean, by the way. So, Un unknown user says he knows this. Okay, email it to me. So, uh, that is the email question to Rick's Life as I see it at gmail.com or uh, spotted Rick at gmail.com. So there we go. See, you know. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, uh, luckily I got the answer because I wouldn't have got it. I, 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 I remember, I remember the scene in the movie, but I, I forgot what actual gun it was, you know. But hmm. back then, though, I wasn't into guns like I am now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now I, when I watch stuff, I pay more attention to what they're using, you know, than before. But I still, like in some movies, you see them do st stupid stuff, and uh, I just let it go. It's a movie. W why get myself all worked up going, oh, my God, that he shot, you know, he shot uh, 
12 rounds out of that, and it only holds 10. It's a movie, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't get worked up over it. But uh, I do notice, I try to notice what they're using, though, just out of curiosity. So um, that's where I'm at on that. Yeah, that was, a, actually, I'm forgiving it is a great movie. It really yep. is. So, um, all right, we're almost out of time now. I mean, I don't know who comes. I don't know who comes up next. I think there's a big. I think there's a there's somebody on later on tonight. Saturday is a bit is a strange day to do a show. You know, I know I I've also noticed in the summertime I get less viewers or listeners because on a Saturday afternoon they're out shooting or doing out with the family. You know, outside enjoying the nice beautiful weather. But you know, three three o'clock works for me. So there we go. I want to say thank you all for being here in the chat. As usual, I have my main uh, followers, which I enjoy. And uh, it has been a pleasure letting you. It's been a pleasure. Uh, how can I put this? I'm trying to think. It's been a pleasure that you sit there and listen to me ramble for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but, but but basically, this is basically what I was originally when I started. This is originally what I was trying to do. I was trying to do it like an hour radio show, talk show where I just ramble, have a guest on, or a panel on with you know like you or whoever else might show up, and and, and just general talk about what's going on in my life, basically with guns, politics, and anything else. So it's it's working. You know, I'm a required taste. I think is what I is how I put it. <laughs> You know, so, but I tell you what, when I, I was on Clover the other night and we were talking and just being on that show and, uh, I got an extra 10 subs that night and uh, some, and I, and I got a couple of more backers on my Indigo thing, which I thought was pretty nice of you guys. And I really appreciate it. I really do. You don't know how much. So. Anyway, I'm going to let you all go, and I'm going to sign out, and I will be back on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. with Rick's Life, as I see it, shooting with disabilities. Now, I know there's not a lot of it going. I, I, I can't spend an hour on it, but I do try to touch it in the first 15, 20 minutes of the show, talk about you know, my shooting with my disabilities or anybody else who wishes to participate in that, then normally what happens is somebody will bring something up, then I go off, like I'm doing now, I go off on a tangent, and next thing you know, the hour is up. <laughs> but, you know, that's the show. So I want to say thank you that uh, you all show up, and I'm glad I'm back. I'm, I'm on the mend. With the new hip, you know, got my bionic hip now, so I'm ready. And as I, I think I mentioned it last week, I feel like I want to participate in life again. I didn't realize how much I had cocooned myself in my little room here, my you know, my little apartment, and only going out when I absolutely had to. And I haven't been to range for a long time because that even started. To, you know, I could get there and I had the scooter, and I was trying to use that. It, 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 I, when I got there, it was painful to be out there. So I, you know, I stopped going. But now I can't. I'm once I'm get be able to walk with a cane on uneven surfaces. I'm out there, and I will, and I'm going to try to film it too. So put up a thing there. All right, guys, thank you all for being here, and I will see you all on Wednesday. So.